In your normal operating procedures, your NOP, you should have in there recorded your maximum bathing load. It's referred to as the instantaneous bathing load and it needs to be calculated based on guidance from um, PewTag and the Health and Safety Executive. And I'm going to show you how to work it out. So imagine you've got a pool um, and obviously you're going to have to use for your own pool measurements that are um, accurate for your pool but for example say you've got a pool that's 25 meters by 12 meters it's got a shallow end of 0 0.9 meters and a deep end of 1.9 meters now the way that the instantaneous bathing load is worked out is through looking at the square meterage of uh, surface area uh, because each bather should be allowed a certain square meterage of room depending on of space depending on the depth so for example in water that is uh, less than a meter deep each bather should be allowed 2.2 uh, meters squared of space for water that's a little bit deeper for water that's between one meter and one and a half meters deep that increases to 2.7 meters squared of space per bather that's what they should be allowed um, and then when the water depth gets above 1.5 meters it increases again jumps to 4 meters squared so let's say you've worked out that within your pool you've got basically three areas uh, where these different depths occur so you're down your shallow end up to you know, nine meters down the pool all of that area it's all below one meter deep so each person needs to have 2.2 meters squared of space so what you do is you basically work out the square meterage of this area so it's nine meters by by 12 so that's 108 well, what you do then is it's 108 so that's the square meterage of that of that section 108 meters squared so you divide then 108 by 2.2 to tell you how many people can uh, that that area could accommodate whilst still allowing them that 2.2 meters squared of space so 108 square meters divided by 2.2 equals 49 so you could basically have 49 people in that area and they'd still have 2.2 square meters of space per person you do the same thing with this middle section you let's say you you get your tape measure out and you work out that this middle section so from 9 meters and an, another 9 meters until the water goes to 1.5 meters deep so you work out again the square meterage of this section and it's going to be the same because it's another 9 meters 9 meters by 12 the square meterage of this middle section will also be 108 meters squared obviously for your pool it's gonna it might be different but you do the same thing again you divide the 108 but this time you divided it by 2.7 so this is not going to be able to accommodate as many people because the water's deeper uh, so 108 divided by 2.7 would give you 40 so the middle section could accommodate 40 so you can get 40 people in there and they've got 2.7 meters squared of space each and then for water that's over 1.5 this is where they need 
four square meters of space because you know some people are going to be treading water at that depth so they need more space to be uh, to be safe so you work it out again seven um, times and let's say you work out that this area now is seven meters until you get to the full 25 meters so you've done nine meters nine meters which is taking you 18 meters up the way uh, up the length of the pool you've got another seven meters so it's you've got a square meterage here of 84 so 84 square meters in the in the deep end sort of section over 1.5 and what you do is you take 84 and you divide it by 4 um, and what that's going to give you is 21 so you've got uh, that, that section could accommodate 21 people whilst still giving them 4 square meters of space and what you do is you add these together so 21 plus 40 plus 49 you're going to end up with 110 um, so 110 is your instantaneous bathing load for that particular type of pool 25 meters by 12 and with these different depths occurring at various points down the length now although 110 is the instantaneous bathing load that you've arrived at at the end of these calculations that's not to say that that's necessarily the one uh, the bathing load that you would that you would go with and record in your NOP because there are other factors that you would need to, need to take into account um, for example whether the people using the pool are swimmers or non-swimmers that's a key that's a key factor that would need to be taken into account so it might it might lead you to decide well 110 even though that's what you've arrived at after doing these calculations when you subject it to further assessment of risk you might decide to lower the bathing load to no more than 80 for example it other factors could be whether or not alcohol um, is consumed on the premises uh, what the lighting is like uh, whether you're getting glare coming through the glazing and causing um, <clears throat> vision problems for the lifeguards that could be a factor that could cause you to say well you're not going to go up to 110 this needs to be regarded I think in most circumstances as the upper limit cap so don't go above 110 but you can certainly feel free to revise your instantaneous bathing load down from 110 um, are there any blind spots you know um, are there any areas where visibility is poor because of other equipment in and around poolside um, all of these things might cause you to decide that um, in the interests of safety it would be wise to reduce the bathing load down so it works, this instantaneous bathing load calculation works as a good starting point. But go through the process of working it out and ensure that it's recorded in your uh, NOP, your normal operating procedures.